Well, Abu Dhabi's bailout of Dubai is helping equities rebound around the world. And it sparked today a Gulf-wide stock rally. So for more on what the $10 billion bailout of Dubai World means for the markets is Mohammed Yassin. He's the CEO of Shua Securities. He's with us live from Dubai. And we should note that Shua is the number one brokerage company in the UAE. Uh, good evening to you, Mohammed. The last time I was there, sitting right next to you uh, in Dubai, it was November 23rd. We just started to see some of the reshuffling of the investment councils, but it was before Dubai World really took the markets uh, by storm, by shock, really, with this debt crisis. At the time, you were feeling pretty good about Dubai's debt situation. Uh, how surprised were you to hear about how heavy the debts were at Dubai World? I, I don't think the numbers were, were new, Margaret, but I, I'm glad that we didn't meet in between those crises. I'm yeah. glad that we're meeting today once this is, has been, re, been resolved. Cause, but I really, I think what's important here is that the fact that it has been resolved. I think really the issue it was, is more that the Dubai world, uh, the owner and the government wanted really to uh, risk, restructure the company and they asked for a standstill agreement and I think some of the investment banks and you know just my speculation of what's probably have, have gone all through is that some of them did not really want to go and sit and, and re, uh, to talk or negotiate restructuring so mm -hmm. I guess that shock on the 25th of November was necessary probably for them to sit together and try to really to, to reach to an agreement and I think the agreement that we reached today was uh, was a very good compromise for all everybody achieved their objectives whether it's the government by getting the standstill still and the restructuring, whether mm -hmm. it is the investment banks by mainly getting their money with plus interest now. And I think what's interesting also is the fact that even the, the money, some of the bailout money is going to be used for some of the, to pay some of the obligations by, for the local contractors in Dubai, which is going to ensure that those businesses continue to work properly and, and they spend and they stay here the, the, uh, the, uh, in terms of work power. So in general, I think it was a positive outcome. I think credibility was very important here and I think that was addressed here. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's hope that we, we, we've crossed one, one bridge and let's hope we, uh, we make the next one. But the environment has changed, uh, regardless of your view on the outcome. The environment certainly has changed. We also heard today of the announcement of a new bankruptcy law. Uh, there seems to be a, a, a certain unsettledness among international investors. When we spoke last, you said foreign buyers uh, were actually coming into the U.S., coming into the UAE market, and were very active at that time. What are you seeing now? Where is new money going to work? I, we see we still the foreign and the foreign foreign ownership in the main companies the ones that attracted the foreign ownership are still there they're still nearly hitting the highs in terms of uh, what, what is allowed in terms of foreigners you look at the Arab tax you look at the Aramexes we're nearly 49 percent of what which, which is what is allowed by foreigners I think we, we got some kind of turnaround of some of the type type or the spectrum of the investors instead of maybe having the hedge funds who are maybe disappointed or decided to cut short or place short some of their positions we got more of the medium to long term investors. In general, yes, there is some uneasiness about maybe uh, the, the outcome, but what, what, what really what we don't understand here living in this part of the world is those loans and those kind of debts were all known from a year ago. The only thing that changed here is just the fact that Dubai wanted to renegotiate. Some people still believe in this world, maybe, that there is something called 100% capital guaranteed or risk-free. And I think after what we've seen from the crisis and what happened with Lehman Brothers, that doesn't exist. You have to sit and negotiate, and everybody needs to probably take some, uh, some of the blame for what has happened uh, so far across the world. And that's what really happened here.